Good afternoon, everybody. I'm really excited to be here today, to be a part of such an amazing lineup of speakers. But I'm even more excited to talk to you about what I believe is the greatest invention of all time, the mobile device. Something that I've been accused of being obsessed with, um, but I'm also a businessman, so I want to talk about enterprises as well, and more so the combination of the two. Just a confession, on my way here this morning, I left home in such a rush that I left my, my wallet at home. Now, a couple of years ago, that may have been a catastrophe, but in today's time, it's no issue because I'm quite literally walking around with a wallet on my phone. Well, figuratively and literally. Figuratively in, in terms of the, the apps that I have on my phone, but literally because I also have my card in my phone. <laughs> so this is the really... <laughs> What can I say? This is, the, this is the importance and relevance of a mobile device. Is there anybody in the audience that does not own a mobile phone? By a show of hands. Anybody? Well, congratulations. You're all part of a community that's four billion strong. Now, the mobile phone is 40 years old today. Or this year, in fact. And in the past 40 years, we've really seen these devices evolve from what was originally text and calling based into what we now call the mobile device of everything. Your phone is no longer just your phone. There's eating time, sleeping time, working time, but there's no such thing as mobile time because mobile is, as they say, always on. It's evolved from being primarily call and then text based into today being your social media, your internet, your, your internet browser, your calendar, your mail, and a whole host more. So if consumers are always connected, enterprises surely want to connect with consumers using their mobile devices. So in years of experience and study, I want to impart some of my learnings on the five most critical steps to a successful mobile strategy, the five ways in which enterprises can win in mobile, win with consumers rather. And these five steps start as follows. Step one. Step one is what I'd like to call your enterprise mobility checklist. It's about asking yourself the hard questions before you delve into something as complex as a mobile strategy. And step one, the first question that every enterprise should ask themselves would naturally revolve around the consumer. So the first question that an enterprise should ask themselves is, how is mobile going to service your consumer's needs? How does mobile fit into your consumer's lifestyle? No one's going to argue for a need of a mobile app, for example, for the cloud train. But if your product is not of that nature, does it still make all that much sense? That's the first question. The second question that an enterprise should be asking themselves is, so after you've, you've asked the question of your consumer's needs, the second question is, what handsets do your consumers have? De developing a mobile app when your customers have feature phones or smartphones um, is, is very dependent. Your, your strategy will depend on what kind of devices they have. Are you doing it for attraction or retention purposes? And what sort of return on investment are you looking for? Is it mobile visits, app downloads, or any other metric? And then lastly, but not least, how are you going to outcompete your competitors? Once you've answered uh, step one, step two entails usefulness with millions of apps in the App Store, is this a solution looking for a problem? Or what problem are you solving? How is it going to be useful to your consumer? Whether it is a, and I'll use apps as an example, social media apps service the needs for human beings to be socially connected to one another. A great example is the FNB's banking app, which took something as mundane as banking and made it cool and funky. There are many examples of apps that serve purposes. There are medical apps um, that are doing incredible things in underdeveloped communities. The news apps, the likes of uh, News24, local, and CNN, servicing the needs of people to, to, to follow the news. As the saying goes, you don't f find the news anymore, the news finds you. One of the best examples I've seen was an app called Blind Square, which actually leverages off Foursquare check-in te technology to help the visually impaired people navigate their way through everyday life. Now, isn't that just something phenomenal? Even something as initially seemingly pointless as uh, Angry Birds, no hate mail, please, solves a need, and that's the need for human beings to be entertained. So if you are not solving a need with your mobile solution, there's a risk that consumers may develop and pun definitely intended apathy towards your, your service. 
Now, for all the good examples I can think of, of mobile services that are solving problems there, I can think of equally as many bad examples. How would any of you like to have a little Wayne face tattoo? Yes, there's an app for that. One of the funny ones that I read was um, an app that helps you analyze your baby's crying. And I was reading this thinking to myself that when is it going to dawn on this mother that perhaps the reason why the baby's crying is because you're wagging a smartphone in his face without changing its diaper. <laughs> But this is the point. It's got to have purpose and it's got to have value. And once you've figured out the purpose and value, we move on to step three. Step three is about usability and adaptability. So simplicity, as the old saying goes, is sometimes the ultimate form of sophistication. Keep it simple. Some of the best examples of, of successful apps in the local and international sphere have one trait in common, simplicity. I'll use Bump as an example, the Bump app. Initially allowed you to transfer music, contacts, and a host of other things, and only really when they simplified it did the service start to take off. So if you can design something that's simple, that's easier to use, your users can grow with you, make that adoption curve less steep. It's tempting to load the boat with features, but keeping it simple may just make your strategy that much more effective. If you can explain and articulate what your service does at a braai or at a dinner conversation, then you know that you're on the right track in terms of simplicity. Well, now that you have something that's useful and simple, we can move on to step four, and that's quality. Do not release anything with bugs. Consumers can be very unforgiving, and that may just be your final shot. Make sure that whatever you're releasing into the market is tried and tested and is going to get you positive reviews because an app can be deleted as quickly as it is downloaded. And word of mouth through something that works will either elevate your service or it could be to its unfortunate detriment. The rules here are refine, polish, release, and repeat. But having something that's useful and something that's easy to use and something that works may also not be enough. The reality is that when in an ecosystem with millions of apps, the chances are that whatever you are releasing to the market may not be novel or unique. So how then do you differentiate yourself? And how you do it is not something that is as tangible as a bug, but it's in the intangible. And that intangible is called user experience. Step five. We're moving to an economy where it's no longer product or service based, it's experience based. But the great news is that the mobile device is a platform for delight. Leverage off the latest capabilities and features of the device to provide a delightful experience. You have the GPS lo locations and check-in at your disposal. The camera on your device, 80% of all users who own a phone that has a camera will access that camera at some point in time, as research has shown. And it's those kinds of features are not just for the likes of Instagram and Snapchat. Use it to your advantage. Context, the vibration. Some of the best examples that I've read of late, um, there were two, two ones that come to mind. One is the Coca-Cola campaign, where they were creative in the manner in which they took their product to market. I don't know if any of you recall, back in the day, giving my, my age here, but you would collect the old Coca-Cola bottle tops and you'd exchange those for prizes. Coca-Cola devised a campaign where you use the accelerometer on the phone to shake your phone at a television screen in order to catch bot collect bottle tops. Now, isn't that just unbelievably creative? Disney, augmented reality app, allows you to superimpose characters onto your pictures and videos, thereby giving you an incredible experience. User experience could be the one thing that brings your customers coming back and utilizing your service on a repeated basis. So in summary, you can win in mobile and it's simpler than you think. What you need to do is ensure that you ask yourself the hard questions regarding your strategy. Make sure that whatever you're releasing is useful to the consumer or your target market. Focus on usability and adaptability. Keep it simple. Make sure that whatever you're releasing to consumers works. And then lastly, aim to give them a delightful experience. And all of these factors combined could be the difference in differentiating your organization. All of these factors combined could give you access to consumers you never knew existed and markets you never thought possible. Thank you very much.